I want to share a few le uh, lessons I've learned uh, along the way of my uh, world trip. Uh, so the presentation is called How to Make Your Ideas Fly. First of all, I want to start with uh, actually what my view was. So uh, one and a half years ago, uh, I was living in Amsterdam and in, in the Netherlands actually, um, in the south, and this was my view. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's basically, this is the whole view, like every day. And what, I look out of the window and I see cows and cows and yeah, more cows and you know, sometimes the cows, you know, you start to use your imagination and the cows are changing. And, but yeah, so this continues yeah, for quite a while. But uh, I decided to change my perspective and uh, uh, move to, uh, to Amsterdam because that's actually where the, yeah, the biggest advertising agencies uh, are and that's so sort of where the scene is. I think it's just like Cape Town in, uh, in South Africa. So I started to work in advertising as a, as a creative copywriter and I worked for, uh, for different kinds of agencies. And I was sort of like looking at my life like, okay, so I'm working for six years now. Uh, I have a well-paid well job. I worked at uh, LEMS. I don't know if anybody in the audience knows that agency. They uh, became second at the independent agency of the year in, uh, in Cannes last year. They made Sweetie, the webcam girl who uh, tracked down uh, pedophiles. Uh, I wish I made it, but uh, <laughs> I, then I had 13 gold lines on my name, but I didn't have it, so I thought I'm going to do something else to make sure that people know who I am. Um, but it was really cool because those were my two creative directors, and I, I learned like a shitload of experience from them, so that was, was pretty awesome. But still, I thought like you know, I'm like, is, is this it? You know, I have a well-paid job, I have a great apartment, <laughs> really nice friends. Uh, I was like playing three times a week tennis, but still, I'm like you know. Is this, is this the life, you know, is this it? Is this going to be like the rest of my life for like 30 years? And, and then I sort of thought like, yeah, you know what? I just want to see more of the world. So I decided to just book a ticket. So I booked a ticket for, uh, for six months. Uh, it's like an around the world ticket. So I went to different uh, kinds of uh, destinations. And um, does it work? Definitely. Awesome, man. <laughs> You're the best assistant ever. <laughs> Um, so I just uh, decided to, you know, to book a ticket and just go and uh, see whatever happens uh, without thinking too much. And that not thinking too much was not the smartest thing to do because uh, I sort of realized that I didn't have enough money to do all the things that I wanted to do because I was going to spend three months in the U.S. and the rest was in Asia. That's, that's really cheap. Uh, so I'm like, oh, okay, that's not, that's not a good idea. And then um, I, I was just thinking, like, you know, what do you really need actually on a trip to survive? And then I thought, like... It's almost like the physiological needs of Maslow, you know, it's just like food and, and shelter. That's actually the only thing you need besides the tickets that I already had. Those are like the biggest costs. Um, so I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's true. And, but yeah, that's not, uh, <laughs> let's not, not forget about Wi-Fi, but uh, that's uh, usually uh, it's free. I see, I see some room for improvement here in, uh, in uh, let's say, Cape Town. I don't want to see this. It <laughs> can be much better, but I mean, uh, it's okay. Um, so I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of that's kind of true. So I decided to sort of uh, change my skills, of ex exchange my skills for the only thing you need, which is food and shelter. And I wanted to make it super simple because, and that's that's also like one of the things that all of us already know, but I just wanted to you know highlight it again. You know, every idea should be like super simple, explainable. Otherwise, you don't understand it. And if you don't understand it, then why would a consumer or anybody else get your point? So I made my idea uh, simple enough to, uh, actually I used Einstein's theory in, in, in 2015 because I made the idea simple enough to explain it in one tweet. And you can actually use that always in your own presentations or just to, to, to narrow down your thoughts to make it like super simple in 140 characters. So I narrowed it down to uh, uh, the following. Chris is not so good in uh, using the right hashtag. He called me the backing intern, the, the back Baker intern and <laughs> like we were like periscoping with 10,000 of people and he just used the wrong hashtag but that's okay because he's, he's awesome and I don't I don't really care actually but <laughs> so um, so the my idea was uh, the, hash, uh, uh, the backpacker intern travels the world helping out agencies brands and charities for food and a place to sleep so basically what I did I had a, an idea which I made simple I wrote it down uh, on a piece of cardboard actually I still uh, I still have it it still survived uh, <laughs> 
uh, six continents, so it's getting a little bit uh, of a <laughs> So this thing has been uh, yeah, actually all over the world, so it's kind of crazy. And, um, and what I did, I just I shared it with, with social media. I didn't even write a press release or anything. I just thought, like, uh, yeah, I want to do something cool while traveling and had no expectations or anything. Um, but I made a, a one-minute video with friends to, to, to explain the idea, to, to make it a, a yeah, to let the world know what I was about uh, to do. And I want to show, I don't know if, I, did anybody see this video already or not? Okay, that's good. A few. <laughs> Sorry, you can close your eyes if you want. That's okay. <laughs> It's just one minute, so. Hello, world. Meet Mark Fuller Hayden. This is his life. He lives in Amsterdam, loves to play tennis, have a beer with his mates, and dance until the sun comes up. <laughs> Sorry for the but awkward dance. <laughs> he works as a creative copywriter at advertising agencies. He's made work for brands like KLM, Dance for Life, TNT Express, Doctors Without Borders, Audi, and many more. But for him, the Netherlands is just, you know, the Netherlands. And Mark wants more. So, he quit his job and left his apartment. <laughs> Starting an adventure in January 2014. To travel the world as the Backpacker Intern. Helping out agencies, brands, and charities. Mark can originate concepts, craft copy, take photographs, device strategies, give presentations, and play a mean game of ping pong. But he doesn't want to get paid. He just wants to trade. A day of his work for food and a place to sleep. He hopes to meet you soon. Follow his adventures and get in touch at thebackpackerintern.com. Hey, Matt. Hi. Hi, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th <laughs> nice one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. It's your last day, man. You shouldn't even come. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks to this video, I, I was able to uh, work with uh, the amazing Matt, who just uh, walked in. Um, and actually, like the, the simplicity of the idea uh, got picked up. And like when I was in the airplane from Amsterdam to uh, Bangkok, which was my first destination. Like, I had no idea what was going on, but in that time, it just got, I don't want to say it went viral, but it just got picked up. And it was like, I don't know, on Ad Week, I was on MTV, I was in Japan, India, China, like, everywhere, just insane. And when I arrived uh, at my hostel, it was, uh, <laughs> I got, like, messages from friends from all over the world, and even friends I didn't know. And they're like, hey, man, uh, awesome, man, uh, do you still remember me? I'm like, no, no, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and actually it still gets picked up because I was the last few days actually doing more interviews than actually doing work, but uh, <laughs> I actually preferred to work, but uh, it was still kind of good for Ogilvy as well, I guess. And it was cool, it was on national television, Espresso and Cape Talk, and what's the other one in the corner? The good Hope. Good Hope, yeah. But uh, I think the biggest accomplishment I had uh, this morning, uh, or actually yesterday morning, uh, so we uh, climbed, uh, 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 what's the name of the hill again? Uh, Lion's Head. So we climbed Lion's Head and it was super cool. And then we walked around the corner and we saw like a double rainbow. I mean, it's like, it's insane. Like a, a, real, a real one, you know? And it was like super bright, like, oh, this is amazing. And then it, it gets better. So, um, so I tweeted, uh, like, uh, climbed Lion's Head this morning, uh, uh, saw a double rainbow. And I saw that Miss Africa, uh, Miss South Africa was following me on Twitter. I mean, I mean, that's... Uh, I, I think it's like the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> okay. uh, maybe that's just me, sorry. Uh, I'm, I can also always remove this part if you want. Yeah. Um, okay, but so the, so the thing is like the first learning is simplicity is key, you know. It's super easy to explain it and then people from all over the world can understand the idea and, you know, uh, help you out or do cool stuff together. One of the things I also got was a, a wedding request via Twitter. It was also like uh, day one. <laughs> or, yeah, wedding request is just hashtag marry me, but it sounds cooler if you say wedding request. <laughs> and, um, but uh, like, so a lot of people, they like the idea, but there are also haters. So, you know, people who, who didn't agree with it, you know, they said like, uh, yeah, how can somebody with so many experience, you know, just, uh, just be, become a slave and stuff. And, uh, and I'm like, ah, you know. Like what I my my <laughs> opinion about that is that I, I don't care about what those people think. You know, you should always just just you know believe in yourself and don't 
there will always be haters. And with everything that's more a bit boldly, there will even be more haters. But you should just don't give a fuck about them and just do whatever you think is right, is right without harming other people, of course. So um, the second learning is, is uh, create your own path. So just always create your own path and keep on following it. And along the way, there will be people who try to you know, push you back on, on sort of the, the track that everybody wants you to go to. But that's just, that's just bullshit. You know? Just mm -hmm. keep on creating your own track. And then in the end, people will, will, will actually uh, appreciate you for doing it. And you will, um, I believe that you will reach higher grounds if you, if you keep on following your own, uh, your own path. So. Um, uh, one of the things that was kind of cool is that I, I, I received more than, than 800 uh, job offers from like, like literally all over the world, just like even like Iran and, and, and stuff like that, and uh, like India, Jamaica. Uh, it's insane. And a few of those uh, I would love to uh, share with you guys. So one was uh, from India. <laughs> Be our backpacker intern, get tandoori chicken in return. I still have to do that one, actually. And um, this one, uh, internship proposition in Transylvania with vampires. <laughs> and this one is really cool. Uh, do you want to be the gardener in Thai? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, if, if anyone has uh, like the ambition to become a gardener in, in Thailand, then you know, let me know. I have like some <laughs> really good contacts over there. <laughs> um, but besides the, a few funny ones, I also got like a lot of, uh, yeah, uh, pretty uh, cool ones. Um, so the last one and a half year I've been on, this is actually my sixth continent, and I've been in, let me see, 24 countries, and I worked at 29 different companies. <laughs> and a few of those uh, stories I want to share with you guys today. So this was actually my first internship, was in, uh, in Bangkok, in Thailand. Uh, it was really cool, uh, so I was at Amnesty International. And it was my first day, and I had like my, my backpack, all my stuff, and like it's okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do, and uh, whatever, just go. And uh, <laughs> I came in, and we had to put off our shoes, and everybody's walking on their uh, bare feet. Um, and then uh, so they were like, "Hey, cool!" And uh, so uh, where's your hotel? I'm like, uh, "Yeah, that was actually the idea that you guys, you know, give me a, a hotel. I don't get paid." <laughs> like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And and then they arranged the place to stay, and it, it was all good in the end. And uh, uh, so that was kind of a, a way that the, <laughs> the project was evolving as well. Um, I think some of you guys know this agency. It's uh, TBWA Chaya Day uh, in LA. It was like almost, always my dream to work there. And now they just, they actually sent me a tweet like, uh, can't wait to have you in the building. It's like, it's insane. Like it's sort of the world is turned upside down. Um, so it's really cool. And they have an indoor basketball court and people bring in their, their dogs and stuff. And, uh, and I worked on a brief. And the client chose our idea out of four creative director teams, so that was pretty cool. And then in the execution, they killed it. But uh, I mean, <laughs> it was it was still it was still uh, uh, still an accomplishment for me. <laughs> uh, this was uh, I think three months ago. I was in uh, in Rio in uh, in the favelas, mm. and um, yeah, I was helping out a, a charity that actually uses football to uh, show ex drug traffickers that there is uh, another way to live your life, and they use football also to you know teach the children how to deal with, with conflicts and, you know, just not always fight and use guns, but you can just, you know, talk and, uh, you know, uh, stay positive. It was really funny because I was, uh, I'm not really a good football player, I, I wish, but, um, like, we had three groups and one were just like little kids, I'm like, okay, I can handle those guys, you know, and then, then it's like 16, 17 year, years old, they're already like getting some muscles and like a little bit more cool, and then the last group was like 20 until 25, I'm like, okay. They're pretty badass, you know? <laughs> so the, they all had like tattoos and like big muscles and, and gold necklaces. And I thought, man, they think I'm a fucking pussy, you know? So, <laughs> so, and, uh, so I, I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then in the lunch break, uh, one of those guys came towards me, he's like with these big muscles. And then, and then he just he gave me a bottle of water. He's like, Professor, Professor. So he was like having respect and he, just, he, he bought a bottle of water from me. I'm like, Oh, yeah, uh, gracias, of, uh, I don't know what I said. <laughs> but, uh, and then I talked to the teachers, and they said, like, no, man, they fucking look up to you. And uh, I'm like, it's just they are used to have an attitude because they live in the favelas with a lot of violence and stuff. So I'm like, oh, OK, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, talking about cool, this, is, this was like really cool, like literally. Um, so I, I actually, uh, I managed to get an internship uh, on Antarctica. So the, the seventh uh, continent in the world, which was pretty mental. And um, 
yeah, so my colleagues were, uh, <laughs> were penguins and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and whales and, uh, and like this is this is crazy. Like one night we we had to our, uh, had to dig our own graves, like literally on the ice, like one meter, and then like two sleeping bags, two layers of clothes, and just ten meters in front of me were penguins and seals sleeping, and we slept one night on the ice on Antarctica. It was just metal. How cold was it? Uh, yeah, it was it was not that bad, but maybe because I was wearing like six different kinds of layers that you don't really feel <laughs> anymore. Uh, like minus two or three, it was not not that bad. Yeah, but uh, it's pretty windy as well, actually. Um, yeah, so I, actually, also on day one of my project, I got a, an invite from from TEDx to speak in New York, and I'm like, uh, so I was skyping with the organization, and like. Yeah, what do you want me to talk about? I didn't do anything. And they're like, no, no, it's in March, and you will have a lot of cool adventures. <coughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to say no. So last March, uh, oh, actually, that's already a year ago. Wow, time flies. Um, yeah, I gave a speech at the TEDx Teen in New York on Broadway. And uh, does anybody know Nile Rogers, the music producer? Nobody? He's a singer song. Yeah, I'm not a singer, but uh, so do you, know, you guys know Chic? Like, freak out, the Chic. <laughs> OK, yeah. That's now Rogers. And he's also, do you know uh, Get Lucky from Daft Punk? Yeah. And yeah, that's the guy with the guitar. So he's like pretty legendary. Like. And uh, so he made like insane amount of records with Duran Duran, Madonna, Bon Jovi. He works with Disclosure now, uh, with Avicii, Chris Martin, you name it. And he was, uh, <laughs> he was the host of the, of the event in, in New York. And I was really happy that my speech was over. I'm like, oh, finally, I can go and sit back in the audience. And then uh, Niall said, like, he said, oh, oh, you crazy tall Dutch guy. He said, before you leave, I want to offer you an internship at my studio in New York. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so I walked back on stage, and I gave him like a big high five. And uh, a few uh, weeks later, I was, uh, I was hanging out in the studio <laughs> with um, uh, yeah, Avicii and, uh, and Chris Martin from, uh, from Coldplay. Uh, that was pretty, uh, pretty insane. <laughs> And I was just like, I was sitting on, on, the, on the couch, and next to me was Avicii. In front of me was Chris Martin. And then uh, 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 and Niall said, like, hey, maybe I should get my guitar and join. And they're like, uh, yeah, man, cool. And he's like, oh, shit, I forgot my guitar. It's in the car. He said, oh, I'll just do air guitar. And they're like, yeah, man. And I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> I like, and then uh, Avicii started to play some kind of track. And then, and then Chris was like, you know, bouncing. And now I was like, bah, 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 bah. and then he saw like Chris like living up, and he started to sing. And I was like, man, I was like in the birth of a new track. It was just oh. mental. And they will uh, probably it's going to be produced pretty soon. So I filmed everything, but if I put it online, they chop my head off. So I'm just waiting until it's launched, and then I can probably show it to you guys one day. Um, but that was like sort of a really big highlight with superstars. But I also really enjoyed like the little things. Like uh, this was literally a little thing. <laughs> I worked at a senior dog shelter in, uh, in San Francisco, and I mean a normal dog shelter is pretty easy. You know, it's like you have a puppy, and then it's like, oh, it's a puppy, I'll buy it. But I mean, a senior dog shelter, they're like grandpas and grandmas. You know, <laughs> so if if you throw a ball, or inst for, for for instance, and the dog is like, yeah. I'm not going to pick that up. <laughs> so it's 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 a bit different. So um, yeah, so I helped them out, and and um, and on one day this little dog, his name was uh, Pinto. He came in and he was like he didn't have any fur anymore, and he was abandoned and it's horrible. And um, they said like, hey Mark, can you can you hold this dog today? I'm like, yeah, why not? So I was holding him like the whole day, like six hours. And in the beginning he was like shaking, shaking, and and every time his his heartbeat lowered down and down and down. And then at the end of the, of the day, he was just really chilled, and he started to eat. And uh, it was so cool because, you know, just like a little thing as just holding someone or a dog or whatever, you know, that makes like a big impact on his life. So that was kind of interesting as an internship, besides creating ideas for advertising agencies. <laughs> um, oh, this was pretty cool. So I was in, uh, in Seattle. In, um, and uh, they asked me to, to help out at uh, the Adventure Film School. Has anybody heard about that school, maybe? No, uh, it's pretty obvious what it is, I guess. But they, um, so they basically help you to film during extreme conditions. They teach you how to film and shoot and edit and all that stuff. <laughs> and um, they asked me to come up with an idea to, uh, to find a new intern. So I said, OK, 
this is what we're going to do. I said, I'm going to jump out of an airplane, and during my fall down, I'm going to scream the job description. <laughs> and then the woman was like, uh, yeah, it's cool, yeah. I said, no, I'm serious. I'm going to do it, you know, and I, I'm really going to jump out of an airplane. She's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But she was not impressed. So I'm like, okay. So the next, the whole night, I was writing a new script, and then until 5 o'clock in the morning, and, and then it was like 7 o'clock, I said, okay, let's do this again. So I was like standing in front of her. I said, like, imagine I'm jumping out of an airplane, and I said, like, Adventure Film School is looking for a badass intern. And I'm like screaming the whole thing. She's like, Whoa, li literally like blown away. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, you're fucking crazy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But uh, I said, just, uh, she was almost like there, and she said, like, yeah, yeah, maybe. I said, you know what? I said, I believe in this idea. I said, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to pay for it, and let me know how many views you want, and then you can pay it back. And she said, like, oh, okay, okay, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> and then two hours later, we already uh, went to the, to the jumping place, so I had to practice the whole script, and I didn't know if it was going to work at all. <laughs> and we drove to, uh, like, a, a thrift shop, you know, like a second-hand uh, shop, because I said, you know, so the idea was called Badass Intern, and that URL was still available, which is, which is kind of cool. I said, but I have to look badass, you know, I cannot go like this. So we, we bought a, like a, a suit uh, at a thrift shop for 20 bucks <laughs> and uh, with a leopard tie, which is really cool. <laughs> and, uh, and we attached the sound system like inside with like duct tape and stuff. And we're like, is it safe? Like, I don't know, just whatever, man, we'll see. And okay, do it, put it on. And, and then, uh, so I had to say like three sentences during uh, sentences uh, sentences, what a difficult word. <laughs> sentences, yeah. During the fall, and then when the parachute opened, I had some other stuff. So I only had to say uh, uh, three months, epic adventures, and learn how to shoot and edit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have the sound file because we're still editing the film. Uh, it's pretty embarrassing, but I'm gonna, you know, I never actually let it here to anyone, but I just thought, let's see how you guys respond. So uh, I, I, I just, <laughs> it was so intense that I couldn't managed to go further than three months. <laughs> it's like, three months, three months, three months. And <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know if the sound is good enough, but it's, 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 it's pretty crazy. <laughs> three months, So there were like three cameras were filming me, you know, the guy was like floating next to me and it was insane. <laughs> now the parachute opens almost. After this sentence, I think. You're like, Poof. yeah, parachute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so probably they, I don't know, even know if they can use it, but we're still <laughs> editing it. It's okay, it was, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, that's kind of cool. And um, so, like, from a, this is like sort of a highlight, but um, I mean, just like in life, you know, it's not always ups, you know, you also have downs, of course. So uh, I was in, uh, in uh, Kuala Lumpur in uh, uh, Malaysia, and <coughs> I was invited to go to Chinese New Year with a, with a family, and I was the only uh, yeah, uh, white guy, and the rest was all, uh, like, whole families, whole streets were filled with people, and they called me Quelo, which they said it was a good word, so I hope so. But um, I got some, some fireworks in my eye, and uh, I couldn't see with one eye for, like, three days, so it was pretty, uh, pretty fucked up. And, um, and then I had to travel from Malaysia to Cambodia. So imagine you have to you know, pay attention to everything, like that you don't get robbed, and you have to make sure you get the right plane and uh, find your way like, in two different, completely different uh, uh, worlds. So that was pretty, uh, yeah, it was not the best uh, experience. Mm. <coughs> this was in uh, Indonesia, in Bali. Um, I got infected with a food virus, sorry, <coughs> which is called uh, Bali Belly. Uh, it sounds pretty cool, but it's not. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's sort of like it feels that your stomach gets turned inside out. And uh, I was like laying in bed for three days, and I, I was like shaking the whole time, and I got weaker and weaker every hour. Uh, I didn't thought I was going to die, but it was sort of close, like, okay, I don't know what else I can do. You st stop losing the, the op opportunity to think, and it's just like, wow, this is really bad. And then 
<laughs> I went to a, a doctor, but it was like a really deserted island. And the sign from the, the clinic was just painted, like clinic, 200 meters that way, okay. And then I arrived at the, <laughs> at the doctor and there was nobody there. And uh, it was like a guy was doing the garden and like, hey man, is there a doctor? And I'm like, is there a doctor? And it's more like that. <laughs> and then he said, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get him. And it's like on his bike, 15 minutes, and he came back. <laughs> and then the doctor came, which was a guy on his bare feet again. Uh, he walked in, he was like 20 years old. I'm like, oh man. But he was actually really smart, so he was, he was like a legitimate doctor. I'm like, okay. And he's like listening and he's like, dude, um, give it like one or two more days, you know, and, and let me know and uh, we can find out something. I said, no, no, no. I said, you're going to give me antibiotics and I'm going to pay for it like right now. He's like, okay. So uh, I bought the antibiotics and like six hours later, I, I started to feel better again. So that's also a tip. If you go to those kinds of countries, just get antibiotics and uh, you'll be fine. Uh, last example from the, the down times. Um, it's pretty crazy. I was in uh, I was in LA. Matt is gone. Eh? Oh, okay, that's okay. So I was in LA. <laughs> he probably shouldn't hear this story anyway. So um, I was in Venice Beach. Has anyone ever been there? Venice Beach. Yeah. So there's like a, a boulevard, and in the daytime it's pretty cool. A lot of crazy people, but in the <laughs> evening it gets a bit dodgy, like some gangsters and stuff going on. I didn't know, so I was just walking by myself. I was hungry. It was 11 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> And I was walking and walking and everything was closed, but like a lot of sketchy people and I still thought like, ah, oh, it's okay, I'll, I'll find a restaurant. And then uh, it's really crazy, like this guy, he, he was on a longboard and he, he came towards me and he had like seriously like a samurai sword in his hands and he's coming towards me like, and I was like really avoiding him, like, what the fuck, you know, and, like, <laughs> and then he, he turned around and, and I'm, I'm like, whoa, if I run, maybe he follows me, you know, so I'm like, Okay, just maybe turn around and with a heavy pace walk back. And like from the inside, it was like, doof, 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 like fuck, man. And then I was back to the hostel and I, and, and I came in like, I, I think I was white or something, like really not scared, but just like, wow, insane. And then uh, the guys from the hostel said like, so, hey, man, what, what's wrong? And like, yeah, man, I explained this story. They're like, dude, you should never go there at night. I'm like, how do I know, man? Just tell me, <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus. So, um, yeah, so th um, yeah, uh, the lesson sort of that I've learned from all these situations is like, uh, it's also like a mindset. I mean, like all the down times, sometimes you, like people or, or, or society or, or whatever happens in your life, you sort of get the feeling that you're like, you know, pushed against the wall, like there is no way out. And there's a really cool quote from um, uh, Suits, Harvey Specter, uh, when, you're back to when you're backed against the wall, break the goddamn thing down. You know, so even if you're like sort of pushed and uh, you, you see no, no way out, you know, just break the wall and there's always a, a different way out. Um, so the lesson or the learning from that is uh, give less of a fuck, you know, just um, and and because that's also why 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 I uh, was invited to something uh, pretty, pretty crazy. Like I had a few times during my trip that I thought like, man, I don't know if I still want to do this. Uh, it's super cool, but it's also pretty stressful. It's a lot of work, actually, to get stuff done. You missed a great story, man, but it's okay. Yeah, it was about LA, but it was super cool. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, but I still decided to just go on, you know, just always, uh, like, I believe that every minute of negative thinking is a minute of your, of your life wasted. So I, I believe in positive thinking. And in some way, it got rewarded, or whatever you want to call it. So. Because I, I got an invite from, uh, from the White House, like the White House, you know, just the real White House. <coughs> uh, so it was an email and uh, it's like, you're invited for a travel summit about studying abroad and global citizenship because you're uh, uh, one of the top 100 most influential travel bloggers in the world. I'm like, okay, who is behind this, you know? Like, I have some friends in advertising. I know that they can Photoshop pretty well. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't believe this. So I didn't reply. <laughs> And after one week, I'm like, okay, maybe I should send one sentence, like, hey, uh, so who's going to speak? And that was it. And then I got this official reply with like the Eagle logo going on and like executive office of the president of the United States. Like, oh man, this is real. <laughs> so uh, I decided to uh, to book a ticket, and um, I went there. And um, yeah, suddenly I was just like standing, you know, behind super famous people. Uh, I saw the right hand of Obama, the right hand of Michelle. Uh, the head of state, um, like everyone from Discovery Channel, National Geographic, you know, all the big guys, and the 100 most influential, you know, travel bloggers in the world, and uh, and myself, and um, so that was 
actually pretty crazy. And and then I was just like sort of recapping like how does how does something like that happen? You know, like White House, and it just started with some simple idea on this piece of cardboard. And that's also like my fourth uh, learning. Like you know, I think all of us have a lot of ideas, and we all sketch them down, and everybody is like sketchbooks filled with loads of ideas. But most of them, they never happen, you know? It has different reasons. But um, I think one of the things is that people, you know, they think about ideas too much. So like, ah, look at it from all different kinds of perspectives, and then nothing happens. So my lesson is, of what I've learned, is uh, think less and do more. And just make shit happen. And then you, you will always end up in better places than if you just, you know, sort of keep on thinking about it. Because that's also how I ended up uh, here at Ogilvy, <coughs> most awarded agency three years in a row, <laughs> which is super cool. So I mean, I just worked here for one week. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, we can edit it later, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I'm just really thankful that it happened. And as Chris said before, uh, it was thank all thanks to David Hasselhoff. And uh, uh, I would love to work here longer, but I, I have to go to the next destination because I want to conquer the world. But uh, I would love to thank all of you guys for the moments we shared, and I hope you all uh, have a, a great weekend. Let's party on Friday evening. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any questions? No, I, I'm OK. <laughs> <laughs> Where is your next stop? Where are you going to next? Um, I'm going to Madagascar. So I'm going to help out a social enterprise. So they, they make energy kiosks. So they asked me to help with fundraising and, and branding and uh, yeah. Do you have a sponsor for your flights? Uh, he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not always. Now, most of the time I paid for all my flights, but to South America, uh, Kilroy, it's a youth market, uh, a youth travel agency. They, they, yeah, they thought my mission was inspiring, so they sponsored my ticket. And Ogilvy was so kind to sponsor my ticket to go here as well. So that's, okay. that's super awesome. Do you want to uh, tell a little bit more about the backpackerinterns.com, your next? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm, um, like, this is, like, super cool, of course, what I've all experienced, but I also want to, you know, share it with more people because <coughs> for me it's, like, literally like a life changer and also with a lot of people I met it's just, it's so cool to have cross-cultural exchanges, you know, and experiences. So I'm actually now building a, a platform uh, which is uh, Backpacker Interns. And the promise is uh, life-changing experiences for creatives and companies. And the idea is that, uh, that we're going to connect yeah, creative professionals with companies from all over the world. And uh, yeah, so now there are already like some big agencies are like in interested and we're talking with investors and uh, so it's pretty cool. So if it's ready, I'll I'll send it to you guys, and uh, I don't want to you know steal you guys from here, but it's also uh, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, but it's also going to work for for agencies because it can be a program that they can send, for instance, a creative team like three months to go to Asia, and then they come back with loads of experience so that they can apply it within uh, the company as well. So. Cool. Any other questions? How was the traveling? Do you actually get to do in the places as well? Um, that's a good question. I, it's always different. I mean, like this week was pretty insane. <laughs> we did so many things, uh, but sometimes, yeah, I had a few times that I was just only working, and then I already was moving on to the next one. And, but I, I don't know. Like I sort of, I have peace with it that you cannot see everything, you know. So it just whatever happens, if you can see a lot, it's cool. It's not. If it's not, it's it's still cool. So it's like, yeah, it's always the answer is it's always different. <laughs> Yeah, thanks so much. Um, so yeah. Thanks for uh, listening. Another question, yeah. Oh. <laughs> How long do you think you're going to do this for? It's a good question. Um, yeah, so the first idea was to do it for six months. And then uh, I was like, oh, it's actually pretty cool. And uh, I don't want to work full time for a boss now. Ah, OK, let's do it one year. And then it's like one year. And I'm like, oh, it's still pretty cool. <laughs> And then I now I made it into my mission to conquer all continents. So I, I, this is my sixth continent. So I'm, <coughs> I'm going to Australia and New Zealand afterwards and then fly back by Japan. And I have a really cool internship at the end, which I cannot share yet, but it's like going to be the, the, the grand finale. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to become a, like uh, the owner of the company, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds cool. Uh, now, um, and then I'm, gonna, I'm writing my book, like a book about my experience as well, so I want to launch it. And then 
hopefully the the platform is already like uh, running as well and and I'll just see whatever happens like I have like insanely amount of ideas that I could do it's more like choosing what, what I think works best for the moment so uh, that's it how long on average do you spend in, in each place um, it's a bit the same as, as the other question it's always different but um, I think average is like like one or two weeks and then I just move on because you can actually do do a lot in, in one week if you force yourself to you know to get some shit done like I worked in uh, in London at uh, International Medical Corps. It's like a charity that uh, teaches people within rural areas to help in within their own community. And I made a, like a script for a film and I produced one film like in one week. And they launched it with MTV and the European Commission. And it was their best viewed film that they ever made. You know? So it's like, if you just force yourself to do it, you, know, you can make faster decision and, and really contribute. Um, and I was also already thinking about the platform that I just want to you know, build a network all over the world and meet as much people as I can, uh, yeah, to just make it better, actually, so. How, how's the support and response been in the Netherlands? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> it's like, uh, like, I was back in the Netherlands for uh, three weeks, just before this, and uh, I didn't even, like, s uh, announce it or something. I was just there, and some people knew about it, and it went really fast. And I was like, just completely booked for three weeks for freelance jobs. Like, <laughs> somebody, some, one of my friends got, like, from one of the biggest agencies in the Netherlands called me. He's like, hey, man, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm like, ah, I don't know, man. Maybe sleep, finally. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, yeah, we need some help. If, if I heard you were freelancing. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. But uh, yeah, man, sure. <laughs> and I was like freelancing. And then like, even like creative directors of agencies, they're just sending me emails like, Hey man, uh, we should talk, man. And uh, oh, okay, yeah, sure, man. And so it's it's pretty crazy. Like I, the last five meetings with agencies in the Netherlands, I didn't even show my portfolio. I'm just talking, like that's pretty pretty insane. So yeah, that's pretty good.